Always a favourite on every rural road. Hyundai Country Calendar. They're reinvigorating our ailing strong wool industry. Just when I thought I'd retired. Yes, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and adding value to one of our forgotten exports. It's got huge potential. We're going to do what we can and go as big as possible to reach that end goal of paying farmers more. I am the fifth generation to have the honour of farming this farm. I get a real kick out of having the opportunity to carry on the hard work that those four generations before me have put into this place. Here, Pete. There's been a Macaldowie farming Tortungi station since 1907. At 34, George Macaldowie knows this land well. There's some real intensive stuff and still has that real hill country feel to it. The station lies in the hills above Nātapa, about half an hour west of Gisborne. It's typical East Coast sheep country. We can get out into those bigger paddocks out the back and the boys jump on a horse and it feels like you're on one of those big ones up the coast. George is bringing in the last of his backcountry mobs for shearing. There are 8,000 Romney ewes on Tōtangi, but George knows the wool clip won't break even this year. Prices for strong or coarse wool have been low for most of the last decade. Sheep are real labour intensive and the whole farming system revolves around their fleece really. All the dates and all the animal health is all to do with the life cycle of the wool on the sheep's back. Meanwhile, another established Gisborne family with close ties to the wool industry is aiming to help farmers. Wool stores looking chocker, Dad. Yeah, it's very full at the moment. This time of the year, though, wool broker it? Henry Hansen, his wife Nikki and son Angus, found themselves trying to shake up the wool industry three years ago, during the country's first COVID lockdown. This has just come in, that might be quite useful. Of course we're locked up for six weeks and no income, no work, nothing to do, sort of thinking, oh, I know the wool industry's in a mess, but holy hell, this is really serious now. I didn't want to be the one in the family after five generations that put a stop to the family business. This is the view he would have seen looking up towards this house every day as he was working down the end of the paddock. And it's got all the wool here drying out on the green, as they used to call it. If the clouds were coming, they would roll up all the wool in these mats as quick as they could and get them into the shed over here. And you've got a picture of my great-grandfather who started the business, Harry or WH Smith Limited. Henry Hansen is talking about his family's historic East Coast wool business. It's been operating since 1894. I think it's a really important thing in New Zealand that we have to keep this going. People are starting to realise we need something like this, something to replace synthetics and plastics and it's got heaps of potential. It's good yield and it's nice colour. What about and we've been length? short of nice colour. Yeah, it's three inch, it's perfect really. Good. We had one stage yeah, during really COVID good. that we actually had to ban talking about what we were doing because from the moment we woke up in the morning until we went to sleep at night, it was, pause the television, we've got to ask a question. <laughs> What about this idea? What about this concept? So we were just living and breathing it 24-7. And it hasn't really stopped. No. But now, yeah. in, in the evenings, we say, right, we're not going to talk about work now, but within the next 20 minutes, we'll be talking about yeah. work. It's just where we're at. I get at least 30 calls a day from both of them. <laughs> <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. 
Those long conversations during COVID led the Hansons to set up a new venture called Wise Wool. They buy A-grade wool, add value, and then sell it to clients who add even more value as they create a range of upmarket products. We've put skin in the game. We sure have. Just when I thought I'd retired. Yes, I'm sorry about that. But, <laughs> hey, we're a team. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Root. Get in the sauce. Get in, Mila. The profits flow back to farmers and back to the East Coast. Farmers used to be so passionate about wool and, of course, because the price has been so poor for the last 30 years or so, they're more passionate about the moneymaker, which is meat. And I don't blame them one little bit because so many companies have promised them the world and said, give us some more money, invest money with us, keep growing your wool and we'll go off and we'll find these amazing markets. It just has not happened with strong wool. In the past, we have sold wool offshore in a fairly raw state and it has been value-added by other countries and none of it has got back to the farmers. We've got to change it. You're looking at a natural fibre and its natural environment. Nature made that to be what it is. And we're lucky enough that we've developed a system which means we can use it. Any value we can add to that product, and especially being able to do it here in New Zealand with these guys is, um, yeah, I think is, is, it gives us a little bit of hope. It's promising. Fellas. Hey, mate. How are we? Good. How are you getting on, brother? Yeah, not too bad. Welcome Good to the end of the road, boys. Good to see you, mate. Good you to well? see you. How's the trip? All right, you know. Yeah. Three years ago, before Wise Wolves' inception, I was not interested in the industry at all. We came up with the idea of actually value add, not just doing the old buy and sell that we've been doing for four generations. So, no, I love it. Love a challenge. Harry does too. Can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, feed wise, so the user not looking too bad. The East Coast has embraced the new concept. 200 farmers are now supplying wise wool. It's also promising for Henry's nephew, Harry Urquhart Hay. He's joined the family firm to help find new markets for their products. We're close family. Because of that, I think we've been able to move a lot quicker. There's no corporate politics or what have you. It's just family getting on and getting stuff done. Between the four of us, oh. it's magic. Two old boomers <laughs> and two young ones, and the four of us make a fantastic team. It's day two of the summer shear at Tōtangi Station in the hills above Nātapa, west of Gisborne. George McEldowey has struck it lucky. The sheep have stayed dry despite the unsettled weather. We can come unstuck. We get caught out and it delays us a day or two here and that pushes every other farmer out after us. One of the crucial things this time of year is we need to get the wool off the sheep as the pressure from the flies starts to creep up. Tradition still plays a big role in how the station is run. These contractors are connected to the same shearing gang George's grandfather used in his day. This is the second shed that's been built here on, on Toting. It's coming up over 50 years old now. It's a traditional setup designed around the sheds in the 70s. It's all still crank press. The boys all bring their own machines now. It's a pretty standard setup for, for around these ways. It's holding up all right. It's probably due a birthday pretty soon, so these wise will boys get all this off the ground. Maybe we'll shout the boys to a hydraulic press one day. Angus Hansen from the Wise Wool Company is at Tōtangi today, along with wool buyer Nigel Moore. Nigel, what are we thinking, mate? They're checking if the wool clip is good enough to be classed as a premium offering. Yeah, mate, I'm really impressed, eh? The amount of humidity and rain these guys have had, it's come off very, very nicely. That colour is very even. It's, it's um, surprising, actually, as you say about it, but it is very good, very good indeed. Despite low prices, Tōtangi Station still aims to produce top quality wool, which includes buying good quality rams to breed from. 
It's fantastic because there is a connection between WH Smith and Toti. Obviously, if something's got to happen with Wolves, and they're trying to do something about it. And I wish them all the best for it. When George's father, Mike McEldowie, was running Tōtangi Station, Wool more than paid its way. That'll do. He's hoping those good days will come around again. In some ways, I'm very positive about Wool. I think it must have a good future in today's climate. But um, convincing the right people in the right place is maybe the issue. I think we've been very, very reliant on some of the Asian countries for wool, and once upon a time it all used to go to Europe, and maybe it's time we looked at spreading it a little bit wider if we can. Meanwhile, at home base on the outskirts of Gisborne, Angus Hansen's mother, Nikki, has come out of retirement and is cooking up a storm with wool. When I'm in my sewing room, it's my happy place. And playing with wool is just like no hardship. It's just my daily passion to do it. Having turned her living room into a centre for innovation, Nikki experiments with Wise Wool's own manufactured buds and blanketing products. After many hours of experimentation, trial and error, Nikki's confident that she's created a new prototype that can replace a lot of the synthetic upholstery products on the market. This is what we're conquering and we've done it. You've got your foam, which bounces back, but is all nasty and artificial. And then we've got our beautiful wool, which is just as good at bouncing back, but it is 100% natural, sustainable beautiful wool. When I think about the pillows that we started with and some of the wool that we were using in there, we now look at it and go, oh, well that's rubbish compared to what we're doing now. Yeah. And we've got fussy now, like really fussy. That emphasis on quality along with environmental sustainability has led to a strong demand for products from their new company, Wise Wool. The new business is growing quickly. Last year, they bought an old dairy factory and found some second-hand machinery in Europe. We were at a bit of a standstill with Wise Wool in terms of machinery, and this came up for tender, and we put an offer in. It was too good to be true. Been here now seven months, and loving every minute of it. Angus moved from Gisborne to oversee logistics at the Tepoi factory near Matamata in Waikato. He's being helped by Mike Tattersall, who's had 40 years in the wool manufacturing business. It's older machinery. The cards are 60s, the lappers uh, 80s, the needlers 70s. It's still the same as what it was all those years ago. These old workhorses are churning out modern materials for upmarket bedding and furniture makers. Mike's enjoying this career refresh. He says as the world starts to focus on climate change and sustainability, he's convinced this is wool's time to shine. I enjoy making it and I enjoy the process of developing these products. I get Angus and Nicky and Harry come along and talk about these different products and I think, oh yes, I'm, I'm going to develop something new, you know. That's what really gets me going. I'm just passionate about it for some reason. <laughs> and our leading furniture makers are also passionate about working with wool. Ready? Yeah, boy. At Tōtangi Station on the outskirts of Gisborne, the last of the wool bales from the summer shear are being loaded for market. Been doing this with Dad and my grandfather for a long time now. Nothing much has changed, really. It's still a pretty labour-intensive job. Oh, I need to keep my record of not losing a bale. 
intact. So it all starts from the bottom tier up to the top tier. So we'll spin them around long ways for the top and that'll give us something to just drop over and tie it all in. It's not fun if you have to pick one back up off the road again. Since 1907, they've made a point at Tōtangi to personally deliver their wool to town. Bit of a beast, though. We've seen a few, um, few loads of wool to town, that's for sure. Hopefully we dodge the rain the rest of the way in. Got the tarpaulin ready in case we need it. Dodge the potholes. It's a half hour trip to town, so hopefully we will um, we'll sneak in. At the wool store in Gisborne, the staff are always keen to get the bales off the truck and into testing. Hey, boy. Hey, am I? Hey. Right. Dodge the rain this morning. Oh, jumps, East Coast Wolves is Henry Hansen's family business. For 130 years, during the highs and lows of the wool trade, they've brokered deals to buy and sell wool for farmers. It's also where Henry gets an early indication of the wool's value. If it's good enough, he'll buy it for the new wise wool operation. So this is a grab sample machine, and it's going to take a sample of the wool out of every bale. There's no human hands involved in it, so it's a representative sample of the entire clip. How's it looking, Benny boy? The colour's good, and the length is prima, I reckon. Cool. It'll tell us the colour, the micron, the vegetable matter and all the attributes that we need to know about with the wool. Tortangi's wool looks to be up to the A-grade standard. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think it'll make it. Looks like about a four colour, which will be just OK, I think. Good length, good gutsy wool. Classified as a wise wool premium product, it'll be sent to Tepoi and Waikato for manufacturing then on sold to clients. One of those clients is Christchurch-based Kovacs Furniture. They're artisans who've been making furniture for more than 50 years. Hildy Kovacs grew up in the family business and has her father's eye when it comes to design and innovation. As a company, we're trying to go to using more sustainable products rather than man-made. The Hendrix is a design we released last September, and we released it in conjunction with Wisewall. And it was hugely successful, which is amazing. And there's just so much growing interest in using more natural products. Fantastic feedback all round. The Wisewool crew has built up strong connections with clients. Often those relationships come about because of their shared family histories. We haven't caught up for a while. No, we haven't. There are three generations here at Kovacs. I and mean, then we've got our long family history as well, so it just seemed like a really good fit. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you? Hildy was very open, very honest, very transparent. And it just seemed like a long-term relationship was going to happen from the outset. Good. Hey, love it. Is this the new Hendrix? Yeah. So you remember seeing it in last September when we had the new release? It looks fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. So this is all Hildy cool. has taught us so much, and she opened up her house to us and let us come through and see what she's doing here in her factory. And that's been a massive learning curve for me. It's catapulted me ahead. It's always so busy when we come in. Yeah, it's got a madhouse after you guys. Yeah. Really good bounce back in these later samples, which I think will work really well. Well, it just seemed natural for it to happen. It was just so easy to get on with them. And uh, I think the mutual respect for each other and how we are passionate about our products just works. In the Kovacs showroom, 
Hildy's keen to show off her finished pieces. High-end furniture made in New Zealand from East Coast wool. The world wants to replace synthetics with natural fibres. So as the days go on, it's becoming easier and easier. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're saying this has gone really well. Sam's yeah. loved well, this. Well, Sam loves it and Vashti likes their top seller. Yeah. Love to use full wool completely in the seats. Yep. Yeah. But it's going to take time, just like everything. Everything baked well takes time. Back in the East Coast Hills at Tōtangi Station, the McEldowies are also looking to the future. They're full of praise for Wise Wool's drive to make wool popular once again. It's got so many benefits. It has a place. It's just we need to step away from those alternative products and jump on board this, this more sustainable one. It's a risk. It's a big risk. It's going to be a hard one to turn around. Um, but, you know, we're behind them 100%. In Gisborne, there's a sense this juggernaut is starting to move. International orders are growing. That's making the boomers happy and the next generation even more convinced of success. Hey, what's this Wise Wolf project has got huge potential, massive legs. We're going to do what we can and go as big as possible to reach that end goal of paying the farmers more. That's what it's all about. It's all about the farmers. We don't survive without them, and the sheep industry will die if, unless something does it, and hey, we're going to give it a good crack. Calendar was brought to you by Hyundai.